My name's Ben and this is my 1975 Mazda RX-3 wagon. I've always loved my Mazdas. My first few cars as a 16 year old were little rotaries and uh, I always dreamt of building a good one. Bought this one in about 99, 2000. Tucked it away for a few years, went traveling, came back, finally bought a house and became a family man and decided to build a car for the family and hence the wagon is as it is. Despite looking fairly standard, the car is pretty heavily modified and most of the stuff's hidden underneath. From front to back, it's got a full extended port 12A turbo built, 1000cc injectors, you name it, it's in there sort of thing. Haltech, then we've got coilovers, 300mm two-piece brake rotors, CAS2 ALSD, rear disc brakes, custom built fuel tank with inbuilt pumps and the baffles, and then full straight through three inch stainless steel exhaust. So yeah, it's pretty heavily modified underneath, but from the outside, it's made to look pretty standard. So, I lived in the north of Japan for a couple of years and, and my inspiration was that that sort of toge racer style, you know, just the, the fender mirrors and the and the dark wheels and just being able to, I live in the hills, I drive in the hills and, and uh, I wanted to be able to enjoy the car for what it is without going too over the top. Puts out about 140 odd at the wheels, which is more than enough for what I do. I mean, I, I put a five-year-old in the back seat, so it's got to be safe and, I'm, and it probably outbreaks the power, but that's that's good for me. And realistically, with the speed limits and things, you can't go over the top anyway, so it does more than more than it should. In a, uh, you know, 40 something year old car, it's, it, yeah, you're hanging on. <laughs> it was a very original car. It came from an old guy. It was lamb's wool seat covers, very, very mint car. I'd actually started another project, which was an RX3 sedan. It went to a panel beater. The panel beater did the runner with the car, cash, the whole lot. I, I basically lost an original RX3 sedan. So we came across the wagon. I had all the bits to build a car but no car. The wagon came about, I put all the sedan parts into the wagon, plus a few extras that I'd imported from the States and Japan. And now it's a, basically a tribute to a, a Savannah RX-3. So it's Savannah dash, all the parts, all the bits. So it's not a model we got in Australia, but that's the idea that it's as close as you're gonna to get to a real thing. So hopefully people appreciate that a little bit rather than saying, oh, it's just a mock-up or it's just a replica or something like that, that really it's just appreciating the fact that we don't get to see cars like this. It, it's like any performance car. It, if you maintain it, you'll have no troubles. If you skimp and, and drive it hard and treat it like crap, then it's gonna give you a hard time. Touch wood, this car, I have not had an issue since the day I got it on the road. I've done nothing more than keep the dust off it and put fuel in it. It's just a case of how you treat them. I've driven to Malala, done laps all day and driven home in the peak hour traffic and the car runs fine that it's an all-rounder. I can go to coffee and cars on a Sunday morning, blend into the traffic and the crowds and not be too stand out, but I can go to any sort of event like that and have a bit of fun. Yes, I'm not gonna break lap records or land speed records, but I'm gonna have a good time the whole time, you know, so, and the drive there and back's a hoot too, so. My favorite thing about it is the car has not been cut or modified in any way to fit any of the performance parts. They're all built to fit the car. So they bolt onto original mounts and the, none of the guards are flared, nothing's been cut. And that car is as factory as it comes. All the badges, all the trim, they're all 40 plus years old, been restored. Nothing's repo, apart from a couple of rubber seals. It's all original stuff. As it's a 45 plus year old car, it's never gonna be brand new. So I, I like that you hop in and it feels somewhat uh, original and old, it still has those old smells and and that sort of thing, you know, door trim's all original. Uh, yes, you can go and buy brand new repo stuff and everything will look brand new and that's fantastic. But I like hopping in and those little imperfections give it character. Uh, the plates on it, so it's Matsuda. Uh, that's the family name of the original owner of Mazda. So the guy that founded it, that was his last name. So I thought it was a good tip of the hat and tribute to the, uh, the history of Mazda and something a little bit different. And it also keeps the Japanese theme that I wanted to go with with the car. I lived in Hokkaido in the far north. It's a mountainous region known for skiing and, and things like that. And it's all hills, all twisty, tight roads, a bit like the Adelaide Hills. And that's the kind of stuff I love, you know, it's a nice cold morning like this morning, getting up on, on a nice twisty road and, and just enjoying yourself. Not going, not going silly, but just having a good time. It's a bit of stress relief, but also a bit uh, a feeling of accomplishment, setting a goal and, and getting it done. So it's one of those that a lot of projects are started and not finished. And for me, having the original sedan that never became to actually getting this thing on the road. Just thanks to the guys that built a lot of the stuff for me. I, a lot of the engineered parts were built by Scott and the boys at MadDut, MDR Race Fab. Steve at Jazzmac built the motor for me, which has been flawless. And uh, Adam at AJ Trim did the trim on the seats, made to look factory and like they were always there. And it's just 
just one of those that I, I guess it brings you joy, you know. Cars are, cars are to be enjoyed, especially ones like this, you know, they're, they're a good time and, you know, I'm not out to, for fame and glory or anything like that, I just like enjoying it, so. Thank <laughs> you.